Ah, thank, thanks. <laughs> thank you. So we welcome Rajiv again. Uh, he will be now sharing with us the story of our Devanagari script, the script that is ancient uh, script of India, which is used to write Sanskrit and many other languages. So over to Rajiv now. Thanks, Rajiv. <clears throat> I'll now, uh, let me take you on a journey exploring a script, the beautiful script called Devanagari, which is Devanagari, which is script which is originated here in India. It is, it is one of the oldest scripts in the world. And even today, it's one of the most popular scripts. When I am saying popular scripts, that means what? This is one script which is used to write more than 120 languages across the globe. Now, this is overwhelming. But why is this script used so widely to write so many languages? One reason is that this is a perfect script. Now, this seems to be a tall claim that perfect script, what do you mean? Every script has to be perfect. And what makes this script so perfect? That question is very valid. What makes a script perfect? Okay. The purpose of the script is to put into writing, put onto paper, what is spoken. Now, if, if I listen to you, and I put it on a paper. You take that piece of paper, go to any part of the world, show that paper to the person who can read that script. And if he reads exactly same as I had narrated, then the script is perfect because nothing is lost in translating sound to the letter form. This is easily achievable by using the script called Devanagari. Do we have other examples where uh, we can directly compare that? Uh, okay, how, what could be the difference? Okay, let me compare it directly straight away to the Latin script, which is English script. In English script, we've got a set of uh, 26 letters which are used to write almost everything which also has uh, in, 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 mixed into it a uh, set of five vowels. Five vowels and uh, the consonants they together comprise the script. But don't you need to remember the spellings? For instance, unless you know the spellings of Czechoslovakia or knife starting from K or Ndivudia starting from P, would you be able to, to write it just by hearing it? If I say pneumonia, can you just write it without, if you do not really know the, the, the spellings? And if I say pneumonia, you write it in your own way using the script. You take that piece of paper somewhere else and you show it to 10 people. I'm sure 10 people are going to read it which is not going to be close to pneumonia if you write it with a P. Then there is an urgent need for a person who is using the script or person who is reading it to know the spelling. She has to cram it by heart, which we do uh, as we learn the languages, as our intellect grows, as we grow in life. And all the spellings are there. It, it is a part of our uh, memory. And then we don't stress it all. If the word like pneumonia comes or knife comes, uh, it is pretty easy for us to identify it. But that has happened because we have learned the spellings. Well, if you know the script, which is Dev Nagri, and anybody just says anything, you can write it down without knowing. You don't have to remember anything at all. You just have to listen, understand, and write it. Simple. This, these, there are many scripts like these. I'm not saying that Devanagari is the only one. Uh, phonetics, these are called phonetic scripts, but within in a family of phonetic scripts, Devanagari again holds a level. Uh, 
now why it is even in even among the phonetic scripts why what what is the special place for devanagari now to understand this uh, let me take you to uh, a difference between evolution and design the process of evolution we know is a, is a process it is in which a generation improves upon itself so that it can survive in a long run that is the story of evolution every generation improves upon itself looking at the surroundings and bringing in the changes so that the survival is better and it can continue to survive and not become extinct that is how every generation gets created over as a layer of, above the previous one the characteristic is that every next generation is more complicated than the previous one well uh, how does it happen well it happens let this uh, let me uh, quote it let me explain to an example let's go to the beginning of life as which uh, we know started as a single cell organism it evolved in the next generation it becomes it became dual cell organism then more than 2 to 4 for to then the molecules begin to get formed and then the, it all becomes each and every generation like two is more complicated than one four is more complicated than two every generation and that uh, that continues till date every next generation is more sharper and more uh, more complicated than the previous one that ensures that the survival is better and then the next process is compare this to the design design is something in which we use our existing knowledge to a specific purpose to create a system to create something which which we which right at the point of inception of the thought process is there in our mind that this is i am going to create and we use our existing knowledge for that these are the two ways in which anything gets created anywhere in the world one is either it is evolved when the nature creates it goes through a process of evolution when man creates it goes through a process of both evolution and design devanagari is a script which is designed against almost all the scripts that i know of which have evolved over a period of time something which started as markings in the caves became cuneiform then became the greek alphabet hieroglyphics in egypt and then the more it be continue to become more and more formal till greek alphabet came in from it the direct descendant which is a latin alphabet which which we use even now this is how all the alphabet have got created through a process of evolution devanagari was created specifically for a very specific purpose it was used created to write the sanskrit text sanskrit text is uh, particularly which text when well, these are the vedas we have four ved and uh, oldest text anywhere in the world they contain knowledge which till date guides an indic thought process these are the books these these are these this is a collection of thought which has been guiding us through the ages and they continue to do so even now we see that sanskrit of course is uh, is a very old language and vedic sanskrit when we talk about in which the vedas are uh, are are narrated that is called vedic sanskrit that is the indeed the oldest one then it came in as as the languages grew then came in tamil sanskrit and then there was a need to put these vedas so that the knowledge is not lost it was put to the vedas uh, some kind of a language is required was required a uh, script was required which would put these ved or the knowledge onto the paper in such a way that even thousands and thousands of years hence 
which is now and from now when we stand and look into the future thousands of years even further the message is, is not going to be lost there was a oral tradition of passing of the thoughts from uh, from the teacher to the student and that had been the tradition mainly in india till the time we reached the point in where we realized that the knowledge is becoming far too difficult to remember and complicated and it needs to have a record that is when the need to create a script for uh, writing of these sanskrit texts came in and thus began the journey of creating of a devanagari alphabet now with that uh, i'll put on a few devanagari letters on a paper and then we'll analyze how and why these are different this is how devanagari is written in devanagari script every letter uh the component of the collection of letters in a it, it is called alphabet and letter is called akshar in in hindi or sanskrit akshar why is it called akshar uh, that also has an interesting point behind it akshar is a combination of two letters two separate words one is a and one is kshar a means when you put a in front of any other word that means it reverses the meaning that means not it is whatever is the meaning of the remaining word it reverses that so that kshar means damage now when we put a in front of it it means there cannot be a damage now so something which is indestructible is called akshar and akshar is the hindi translation of the word letter that means that anything which is put down in the form of an akshar has got a life span which is infinite it is never never ever going to uh, get destructed this is uh, this is uh, what is which comprises the entire devanagari alphabet if we have noticed every letter of devanagari alphabet has three combinations three elements am i audible from this distance hello yes yes okay i'm talking about from this distance 
Am I audible? Okay. Hello. Yes, you are audible. Okay. Every letter of a Devanagari alphabet has got three elements. One is a circle. One is a horizontal line, and one is a vertical line. Now let me move to these individual com components. Please remove the lead, Hello? then it will be better. You mean use, like this? Use, use the laptop's uh, audio. Oh, but the audio I'm not able to uh, listen on my comp. I need to leave. Uh, in fact, whenever I'm going to the board to make a point, then I will remove it because at that time I'm not, I will not be required to listen to anything. And, uh, and it looks at, uh, you know, uh, um, is there any audience right there? Yes. Audience are able to hear you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. This brings us to the essential construction of a Devanagari letter, which I just uh, like I mentioned there on the board, comprises of a part of a circle, a vertical bar, and a horizontal bar. Now, this there is a story now but when i say that look how old this this entire process of developing of this script called devanagari is it will be evident from this our oldest texts are rigvedas i am narrating a story from rigved rigved in in which lord maheshwar which is lord shiva he was performing his dance this is just look at I'm, I'm going right to the beginning of creation of the alphabet when the whole thought process came in now that the 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 knowledge which remained there in the collection of vedas and this sound which was produced by lord shiva while he's, he was performing his dance Sages, the Rishi Munis, the sages around them, they reached him and said that once you stop dancing, once you stop producing this sound, it gets lost. Is and every time we have to come to you only to see that and to be soaked in this entire knowledge. Is there a way? Can we somehow put form to these these sounds? So that they can be retained and uh, it can be referred to later on when you, when you're not there. So the need to put form to sound is mentioned there in the Rig Vedas at that time. And then Lord Maheshwar, Lord Shiva himself, he said that that's a great idea. Why don't you put form to the sound? Well, then how do we do this? Okay. Let me produce sound which is possible for a human being to say. And he used, in fact, uh, Lord Shiva, his musical instrument that he used is called Damru. I am not too sure for that. Uh, in, in India, everybody understands what Damru is. But maybe uh, for the benefit of our, uh, our overseas viewers, I'll just say, I'll just narrate, I'll just uh, try to uh, show what what that musical instrument is. I'll try to make it in the one-to-one -one size so that we can also understand, yes, this is the size it is held. It is something which is held in hand and it is moved like this and it, it, it produces sound. The look is something like this.
as you can see this is the shape these are leather and these are the strings with the beads on uh, attached to the ends when we shake it like this then it falls and a sound is created now he used this instrument and created sound 14 times i say and why 14 times he's like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and he said that i'm going to be creating it for two in in 14 uh, uh, 14 times because moon from new moon to full moon it takes 14 days to reach and from new moon is zero absolutely what is in india it is called shunya nothing to the full complete circle it goes into 14 steps that is then he said these 14 are and this damru has got a uniqueness in it that the sounds produced by damru can also be produced by a human being by using various ways in which he says now these are the 14 sounds work out from uh, from nothing which is zero nothing absolutely to the full size divide the sounds in the categories in which people would be able to write and then thus the symbols could be created <clears throat> the set of the sages then sat together with this information with them that yes these are the these are the 14 sounds they divided the 14 sounds in five categories those five categories if you look at the devanagari alphabet today you will realize that it is like any other language it is a set of consonants and vowels but the consonants which are the sounds vowels only support the consonants the consonants are in it, in devanagari divided into five consonants of five sound sounds each so in all you got five categories of sounds and these sounds are produced in our mouth in five different zones these are the only five different zones in which the sound can be produced and these 14 sounds were categorized in these these five zones one is when the back of our tongue touches the soft part of our top the sound that is created in in devanagari these are the letters five letters which are ka kh ga gh na this is the one set of sounds then there is a second set of sound which is when the tongue touches the front part of the top not the soft part but the hard part these five sounds are created at that time and the cha cha ja jha na then comes in another set of sounds which are created when our tongue is curled a little bit towards inside and it touches right at the tip of the teeth inside our mouth these are ta tha da dha mainly these four and then there are there are dentals in which when the tip of the tongue touches the inside of the teeth that is ta tha da dha and finally when the lips the fifth category is the when the lips touch and they open together when the lips are creating the sound as a pa pa ba ba in all these ones you will see that the lips are touching and then it is pa pa ba ba collectively these 25 sounds these 25 letters denote the 14 sounds which are produced in our mouth and which had their origin in sound that sound the sound of the damaru and the sound which can be produced and the produced by this is why i was saying that the dev this alphabet the devanagari alphabet for writing is a designed alphabet unlike any other one see how systematically the alphabet is it is not starting from one sound and then in a linear fashion going right up to the other if you look at the devanagari alphabet it is it, it forms you know some uh, it is in a in a in a way of a table 
in which there are categories of sounds and then there are vowels there are 14 vowels and then uh, collectively there are 40, 47 letters in the alphabet which can produce every imaginable sound which a human being can produce and that is the reason why you do not need to remember the spellings when you are using the script you simply listen to what is being said and just you've got a symbol and a letter a character a set of vowels and a consonant or there in front of you so that you can use them to exactly write what is being said and then take that piece of paper anywhere in the world and let the person read the message read is not going to distort at all this is why this script is called uh, you know a perfect script now coming to the next and another aspect when i say german script well the name itself gives it away that it is the script from germany when i say the japanese script well the name says that it is japanese chinese script from china tibetan from tibet just name it latin script from latin but when i say devanagari can you get an idea where the script is from? It doesn't say India. It says Devanagari. Now, this again is a combination of two words. Dev is the gods. And Nagar is a place of residence. Uh, not a house, but a whole community or a state or a, or a large place where, where people live. And the script of those people is called Nagari. So Dev Nagari. Now, where is Dev Nagari? If, you, if I want to find it geographically, like Germany, pretty easy for me to know. Devanagar earlier was a place in India which now is called Kashi. And the area between Lucknow and Kashi was the area, was the land at uh, which was in those days most educated, and most of the scholarly world work was happening there. And the scholars who were entrusted with developing of the script. Devanagari resided in this area during the period of the Gupta Empire when it was decided to put it now formally. That is that is when and then it became so popular because of its perfection that today more than 120 languages across the globe are written using this this one script. So you see this is how the letter got evolved. Now, there is another way of looking at, uh, when we look at our scriptures, uh, Vedas, again we get another, uh, another mention at multiple places that this curve, the zero, uh, this, uh, the, uh, the part of uh, the letter, like I said, is every letter is a combination of a part of a circle, a vertical bar and a horizontal bar. Now, what is the significance of all these? This curve comes from what you, what you can call a circle. It is a representation of sun. It is also a representation, representation of nothingness, which is Shunya. Shunya is very profound in Indian thought. And this also is a Shunya and infinity are, are one and the same thing. Uh, it is just a matter of looking at it. I can even demonstrate it that it says the two are actually essentially the same. A part of a, every letter in Devanagari is taken from a curve. Again, I'll go to my board and demonstrate it. I'm writing a few letters here. A letter. A. B. C. 
Now, there are curves in every letter. which are taken from circle. It could be half circle, it could be quarter, it could be, but it is taken from there, which is the concept of Shunya, which is the concept of sun, because it gets all the energy from the sun. And this is a script in which the sound of I'll uh, come back and I'll uh, elaborate that a little bit more. The sound A is built into each and every letter. For instance, this letter, when I say this is La, La is, is plus A. A is represented by this. This A, which is represented by this vertical bar, is the same as this entire letter. Presence of this in this is denoted by this. So when I, this I, this is got presence of R, this is R, R. R is the most basic sound in the world. When I say basic sound, it means what? That means every other sound which we create, even for instance, if it is a clap, if it is this, it is R plus some other sound. That the, this is the most basic one. R then and add something else to it, add some flavor, then it may become U, but then U is also R plus, uh, plus another sound. The basic one, basic sound remains to be R. So when you add this, that sound to a letter, it becomes complete in itself because it is now full, a consonant and a vowel, combination of a consonant, consonant and a vowel in a single. It is, that, that is why every letter in Devanagari is called a syllable. It makes it complete. Whenever you are reading it, Kamal, for instance, you are, Ka is A is built into it, Ma A is built into it, La A is also built into it. So it is very easy to read it as, as Kamal. Now, the third element which comes is the horizontal bar. This horizontal bar, because this was produced, this script was produced in the land of the gods. It is, it is called Devanagari. This horizontal bar above each and every letter is the blessings of the god that this script is directly blessed by the almighty, the, the ultimate and anything which is this has got. This is not something which is, uh, uh, which can be taken very simplistically. This is blessed directly by the God. That is the presence of the horizontal bar in uh, in each and every letter of Devanagari. In fact, there are. I do not know of many scripts which have got something. Even if there are a few scripts which have got a horizontal bar running at the top, they are either variations or direct descendants from the script in Devanagari. Otherwise, you will not find this kind of a character anywhere. This is what, what makes it unique. In fact, this is why this script is, even if you can't read it, it becomes identifiable anywhere in the world. If there is a script which has got a horizontal line running over, running above each and every letter, you know that yes, this is Devanagari, even if you don't understand. So there is a presence of God. There is a presence of the sound A. Uh, which is I, which I personally believe is an exceptionally important aspect of writing uh, is the sound of uh, I'll, I'll come back to this and the third is the element which is the source of energy which is taken from the whole circle and the circle which is a representation of sun. Now what is the significance and importance of the presence of the sound A uh, in each and every letter? That is in absence of it, for uh, why over the ages, you okay? Uh, I think we all of us uh, in, in India are abroad. We have heard of we, we keep hearing about yoga, we keep hearing about Mahabharata, we keep hearing about Ramayana, 
I am stressing on the word A in the end. Ramayana, Mahabharata, Rama, Ravana. This additional A, where has this come in from? Which is not, which is actually not, uh, not in in the. It is not present in the word. It's yog. It is not yoga. It is Ram. It is not Rama. It is Mahabharat, not Mahabharata. It is Ramayana, not Ramayana. Where is that additional A in the end and coming in from? Because when things got, when we had, a, we have got more than 200 years of history in which Britishers were here, and because of, and along with them came in English. Then all our texts got converted or translated into English. English language does not have this. Now, this is Mahabharat. Now, how do you stop it there? It, it actually ends in a very subtle sound of R. Ah. But that kind of a system is not present in English. When I'm writing it in Hindi and I'm writing like Kamal, I just wrote there, then in the end, La, la ends with certain very subtle, very soft pronunciation of R. Ah. Which is completely missing. If you write in it in English, what? How do you write? K A M A L. If I'm writing the word Kamal, K A M A L. Now L has it, it in actual pronunciation. L also has a a sound. Then to make that thing complete in English, they made it. They added an additional vowel a in the end while translating it from Hindi to English. So all the English texts. All the English texts which were based on Hindi, which were translated, which were translations of Hindi texts, got an additional A added there in the end to make it sound similar to the Hindi words, which are actual words. Now what happens when it comes back to India or it goes anywhere in the world? When you write K-A-M-A-L-A, -A -A, what do you read? You read Kabbalah and actual word is Kamal. And same thing happened to Mahabharat. It became Mahabharata. Same thing happened to Ram. It became Rama. It and the list is endless. Today you can't you can't undo the whole thing. And now yoga has become yoga. It is yoga. It is not yoga. Yoga has become yoga. Now we even celebrate International Yoga Day. I don't know what yoga is, but I definitely know what yoga is. <clears throat> this is why the perfection of the script is required and this is because this sound of A is already built into each and every letter of Devanagari. It, you cannot, when you are using the script, you can't make a mistake. If you ask me to write Kamala and Kamal, I will write it separately. I will write it so differently that yes, you can understand. Whoever is reading will not make a mistake. But when I am saying write Kamal, and then you use English, then it becomes Kamala. And when it comes back, then the entire, uh, my own words become, start meaning and you know, sounding something else to me. But then that is what happens. Uh, cultures do influence each other. It has, uh, if certain words got distorted, then a lot of service also got done because our uh, text got uh, translated into so many languages. And uh, along with the languages, when the, they became written in those languages using the scripts which they used. Certain distortions did occur, but that is okay. These kind of things are uh, happen and then it is our intellect which makes us think and which makes us in our mind itself undo all, all, all the distortions that have happened and get again straight to the real meaning and the real sense of the word. That is, uh, there is a lot uh, that, that can further be talked about as far as Devanagari is concerned. But I think for the session, this should, this should suffice. And uh, we can, uh, if there are any uh, questions, if we, and if you are taking questions, then I would love to do that. Otherwise, uh, with that, I'll close the session here. And uh, hoping to uh, see all of you another time, um, another talk. And I hope that the next time it is more of a discussion. But uh, these are the times in which uh, we have to Make, make these kind of compromises. But yes, the message should get across. Thanks a lot, Arvi. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you, Rajiv, for your insight in Devnagri. 
and uh, i think professor gaur has joined so over to you sir yes i can see professor gaur hello sir how are you sir you are on mute you are on mute sir yeah thank you thank you rajiv so thank you rajiv ji for such a wonderful uh, story session i think that's a amazing uh, many uh, instances you have quoted in this it is really interesting and i think uh, last almost two hours you have been uh, giving such a valuable information initially for this uh, screening of international uh, virtual exhibition and almost every uh, calligrapher uh, shared uh, his or her experience wonderfully and and yes uh, it was have recorded these sessions so i'm sure uh, like then it will be put online uh, others who have not joined uh, will will definitely benefited out of this uh, do we have any questions uh, to you right now in hindi because i don't uh, 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 in the delay there are no questions actually I, they are asking but they are not saying they have a question but i cannot see any questions actually there was no question i i have not able to see in q and a so janet ultimately you will to join it you oh thank you very much for inviting me it is such a pleasure to be here to meet all the creative ideas and it's a meeting a whole world in such a few minutes it's fantastic and i hope we can network again and um it was such a pleasure to to see all the artists and um, calligraphers and meet them um yes i i i feel my heart is beating for this topic for mother tongue i i said to to miss rito matur and to our calligraphers too um i feel we have to be aware of the history to learn for the future and so mother tongue is the same we have to be be keep take care of our mother tongue to be more global and um networking with others just we have to uh, to be sure where we are from so oh sorry my english is a little bit broken now <laughs> no, it's absolutely fine it's really fine and uh, but this unesco has decided to celebrate next uh, decade as a decade of indigenous languages it's starting from 2022 to 2032 and uh, uh, we are expecting uh, many such programs uh, Uh, which promotes uh, use of mother tongues and local languages and preservation, propagation, and uh, uh, promotion of all uh, uh, local languages in next uh, ten years. Uh, and uh, I, I represent India in that global task force. Uh, in uh, so I'm 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 also uh, trying to develop this network. And this this uh, this program was very good opportunity. With the efforts of uh, Ritu and Rajiv, we were able to get connected with many of you, and and I'm sure uh, like this network will further uh, help us in designing some more programs and some more activities in the future. So in meantime, I welcome Mr. Tim Brooks. Uh, welcome, Mr. Brooks. Uh, 